What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with another episode of Lions Latest, going through the latest Detroit Lions news. We have the blue going on behind us, man. We got good vibes with the blue back here. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the latest injury report for the Bears and the Lions heading into tomorrow's game in Chicago, as well as some of the plays from this past game against the Green Bay Packers offensively. Our last video was very long. It was all about the defense, but in this video, I want to touch on some of the clips from the offense. Much less because there's less that I really want to showcase and I want to make sure this video is much shorter than that because we'd be here for a very long time. But there are some things that I do want to show. Good, bad, creative things, things that I think we're struggling with, all of that stuff. So with that being said, let's get it started. Fire it up. It's made a great decision. Great teammates, coaches, and other people who want to be Super Bowl champions. And we are. We're going to do it this year. And we're going places, because we want to go places. Touchdown, Detroit Lions! Before long, where are they going to be the last one standing? Welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. And we're back with another episode of Lions Latest. So we're going to start with the injury report for the Lions and Bears first. Of course, the inactives will come out tomorrow. The plan is that we'll do some sort of live pregame show like we normally do where, you know, like we did last week with Easy, and we had guys on there. Where The plan is we'll do something like that. I don't know if we're going to have guests on. We'll see. Hey, you're going to have to tune in to find out. But that's the plan because we won last week and I don't want to change it up. So, you know, I'm just going to keep trying to do the same thing until we lose. That's, that's the goal. But today I want to dive into this injury report just touch on it because we haven't done that yet some of the roster moves each team has made and then again some of the offensive film from this Packers game because I'm telling you I thought you know going into it this one was kind of boring but re-watching it it was fun to watch it really was I mean that's a heck of a defense so the battle was really cool to see so with that let's start with the Lions side first we'll go through their injury report as of Friday the first guy that you have is Josh Reynolds he has been listed as out for this game now currently the Detroit Lions really don't have any outside receivers like the area that they tried to address this offseason bringing Josh Reynolds back of course Quintez Cephas coming back signing DJ Chark drafting Jamison Williams right now we currently have none of those players available and you don't really have a normal outside receiver yes Khalif can line up on the outside St. Brown can line up on the outside we have guys that can do it Tom Kennedy does it Rock Wright does it but you don't have that normal outside receiver. That's what we're missing right now. And this will be the second straight week that Josh Reynolds is going to miss. It just affects your defense entirely when you don't have that presence. That's why the Lions made it a something that they wanted to address this offseason. But currently, none of them are healthy. So it's very unfortunate. Last week, you saw us have to get creative without having Josh Reynolds. Similarly to what we saw at the end of last year when we did a lot of fast motion with St. Brown, Khalif Raymond. We saw that again in this past game against the Packers. So... Ben Johnson is going to have to get creative. Now, one move the Lions did make is they went out and signed back to the roster receiver Trinity Benson. That name should sound familiar. Trinity Benson is a fly. That name should sound familiar, though, because Trinity Benson was here for the entire offseason. I thought the guy was going to make the 53-man roster. I thought he was having a good offseason. It wasn't perfect. He had a few drops. He had easy drops. I mean, that's what they were. He had an easy drop, I think, in the preseason, like a screen. He did that in training camp as well. But he was also making big plays he was like the second unit big play guy right it was dj chark who kind of took over the offseason program he, he did he just made the big plays he was exciting he flashed every time but then with the second unit it was trinity benson that was getting over the top now khalif had his for sure tom kennedy had his moments saint brown his moments but it was trinity benson that was the guy that was winning over the top specifically and while the lions aren't getting a ton of size here with this edition and i don't know how much he's going to play this week they do get a guy that they feel like can win on the outside Maybe just a little bit more than what they currently have. Khalif's fast. He might give me an, uh, probably like the 40 or something like that, but after, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying that this is going to like save us or something because it's not, right? Obviously, last year when he had to step in, it was not very good. So this is another opportunity. And according to Jared Goff, he said he will be active and up this week. Didn't, don't know how much he's going to play. I'm sure he can play in certain sets. There's things that he's going to have to get accustomed to. Things have changed. But he also has a lot of familiarity with this offense. And I don't think that he can't be out there for any situation. Feels way better. I feel way better. I'm uh, more confident in, in the system, just knowing the ins and outs of the system. Because, like you said, I got here basically week one of last year. So uh, just getting those much-needed reps during OTAs and, and now training camp. We may see him a little bit this week, but that's just one move that the Lions did make to this group. But, again, I expect a lot of creativity to try to get these guys open and at the same time I don't think this pass defense for the Bears is as good as the Packers not to say they're not good 
well, they're not talented in areas, but the Packers pass defense is tremendous. Continuing with the Lions injury report, a couple ones here. Kirby Joseph, he's in concussion protocol, but according to Dan Campbell, he sounds very optimistic that Kirby's on his way to playing this weekend. Full participation on Friday. So he's in line to play again this weekend, and you know he wants to get back out there after last week. Also, Iffy is limited all week. Now he's questionable, so maybe Iffy, who was not available last week, is potentially healthy enough to play in this one. Again, I don't think we'll really use him if we have Elliott and Kirby Joseph. But I was thinking, in like, okay, could you put Iffy out there? Because then you can put the safety kind of in a cornerback position a little bit. But and now you don't really need that because Elliott and, and Kirby can cover. Uh, Malcolm Rodriguez. So I'll star him. Maybe we see him a little bit. Maybe he's a surprise to get some snaps. Malcolm Rodriguez is questionable. He's been limited all week. He had the injury in our last game. Of course, Derek Barnes basically took over. He had a tremendous game against the Green Bay Packers. Not perfect, but pretty darn good against the Packers. Maybe his best as a lion. DeAndre Swift is aiming to play once again. Last week, he kind of got going early, and then after that, we just didn't really see him anymore. He made some big big plays for us, specifically like the angle route that he caught that took us down to the one-yard line. He had some pop plays in there, but we didn't see him a ton, but Dan Campbell's hoping that they haven't like rushed him back necessarily and put too much on his plate where he can continue to basically progress. That's what they're hoping with Swift here, and hopefully that's the case this weekend because, you know, he's very useful, especially without those outside receivers. Frank Ragnall's going to play, and so is Jamal Williams. So those are a couple of names that I want to hit on. Onto the Bears side, their injury report, when we go through it, a couple of names I got to hit on. First off, Tevin Jenkins who is their starting right guard that's had a really good season so far. He is listed as questionable for this game the last two days. Uh, he's been limited in practice. We'll keep an eye on that one. I don't know who their exact backup guard is. I'm going to be honest. I haven't got enough into the Bears film to like just figure that out. It may be Carter, who is the rookie this year. I'm not sure, but I know Jenkins displayed well. We know he's a people mover, so we'll keep an eye on that one. Also, Jalen Johnson, who was one of their better cornerbacks last season, he was really good as well. Jalen Johnson is questionable for this game. And speaking of the defensive backs, Vilder, who has been a starter at cornerback for them, is out for this game, and he's had a good season. They have some good secondary players, like not big names, but they got solid dudes in the back. Muhammad is also doubtful for this game. It sounds like he's not going to play, so expect to see like the Travis Gibsons and uh, the uh, and the rookie Dominique Robinson out of Miami of the Miami of Ohio this week in his place more of a run defender he was a free agent this offseason that they picked up I know we talked about him a little bit but those are some of the main names that I wanted to touch on aside from that I think I hit on everything yeah aside from that everybody else seems like they're pretty much good to go for this one and of course the guys that are on IR so a couple of roster moves very quickly that the Lions announced here before the game first one being that they have signed tight end Shane Zilster back to the active roster now he was on our practice squad we elevated him last week he played in some big moments for us I think right now of course after this Hawkinson trade we expect him to continue to be involved everyone seems to have kind of their own role Brock Wright's more of the blocking tight end right now it's still not great you know he still had the the, the crucial flag missed a couple blocks James Mitchell's blocking is kind of inconsistent at this point as well uh, but you see James Mitchell on some crucial downs he had good pickups the red zone they like him so I like him a lot there too but Shane Zilster was kind of like we need to win one-on-one -on -one here let's look at Shane Zilster maybe the most dynamic tight end that we feel like we have that can win some of those one-on-ones but I think eventually that's going to go to James Mitchell he's just kind of progressing into that for now for sure this makes sense uh, also Jared Davis and wide receiver Stanley Berryhill have been elevated to the active roster for this game you got two of those each week those are the two players first off shout out to Rad's guy Jared Davis no seriously I, I do love this though okay first off I'm assuming this is just special teams which if I remember back to the preseason correctly I think it was pretty darn impactful on special teams and this could speak a little bit to Malcolm Rodriguez's health if Malcolm can't go then of course you're expecting Derek Barnes to start and if you looked at last week Derek Barnes took a very small amount of special team snaps in comparison to what he usually takes when he is the backup linebacker so this could be pointing towards that Malcolm isn't going to be able to play so Derek is going to start I'm not saying for sure Lions may not know for sure right now but it's just a little bit in case like okay if he can't go we're going to activate Jared Davis potentially to play on special teams and then we can have Derek Barnes play that full role defensively that way he's not being asked to do both and you need depth and then finally they have activated fullback Jason Cabinda that's awesome I I'm pumped for that he did say it was feeling good that Jason Cabinda could play this weekend and it looks like Cabinda is going to make his debut this weekend I don't know to what extent 
but I will say this, I think he's hands down our best run blocker, at least from what we've seen so far. This dude is fearless. If you go watch his 2021 stuff, I don't know how big of a role they'll play him in, but he is absolutely fearless. You can line him up at tight end. We saw some of that flexibility. I'm not expecting pass catching here, but I am saying we try to run the football downhill. This guy just does, he's fearless, man. He just moves guys. He runs people over. He is crazy. He's literally crazy as a run blocker, and that's a heck of a compliment in comparison to what we have there right now. So I'm very excited for this move. I really am. Hey, physical, this is the kind of guy that you want out here, and I know Kabinda's been fired up since Hard Knocks. So with that, let's dive into some of this All-22. Take a look at a few of the clips from this last game because all this stuff carries over. You see the same same type of concepts in certain situations. Like you see one pass that was picked off last a couple weeks ago against Dallas. The Lions brought that back out. It was actually almost picked off again. So we're going to take a look at some of that stuff. Let's get into it. There's tons of plays that I could show here, but I'm not going to do that because, you know, I don't want to make this super long. Usually these videos are super long. I don't want to make this one super long on a Saturday. We're chilling out. So I just want to show some specific plays that stuck out. Now, this one is kind of basic, but, you know, you, we always got to start with something that's a little bit more on the basic side. But I do want to showcase the Lions' utilization of fast motion. I didn't even realize how much they did this in this game fast motion like i thought i expected the lions would do this to ton that's what that's what part of my preview was is that we're going to see a lot of this because when we didn't have the outside receivers and we played green bay last because of how they play defensively if you know green bay from last year they like to switch everything basically in the back end so a lot of the fast motion could cause confusion because now one guy has him then he switches into him and then it's like all right i got him but then it's like okay well now they did this and i don't have anybody it's you can cause confusion with the packers in that sense but they're also a very smart defensive back room very they play very well in terms of they can play off man coverage they disguise a lot of things so it's difficult and then you pile on top of that they can get some pass rush they are tough it's why they have one of the best pass defenses in football across the board but let's take a look at this one pretty basic they're just going to go to a cover three drop here early in this game now one thing that always comes to mind to me when i think and watch ben johnson stuff is tendencies and just understanding the the defense's tendencies this isn't always going to be perfect not exact for him sometimes you think they're going to do one thing and then they don't and that's why we have you know multiple calls at the line based on our looks that we get but tendencies are huge and I feel like Ben Johnson does a fantastic job against that what do they do on first down second down third down in this situation you get the sense that he has a really good feeling of what a team is going to do based on different situations all the time here you go early down I believe this is and it's just simple Lions have done versions of this swing pass or going cover three so use that fast motion you get outside here with St. Brown you bring the outside cornerback up inside and again like I said they like to switch a lot of things and you just create a lot of space here with DeAndre Swift he ends up picking up 20 yards on this play also just want to showcase Swift because I think Swift is could be very impactful this next game especially again as he continues to work to being the healthy Swift that we know where he's getting more than five touches a game I'm not saying he has to be the only guy that touches it because that doesn't make sense but more than what he has been as he continue works back into it now I'll showcase this real quick because it is Swift again I did like how the Lions zone blocked for a majority of this game. I thought they did pretty well run blocking. It was a little slow out of the beginning, and we won't show a lot of run plays, so I do want to just touch on this. But as the game went on, zone blocking, I thought the Lions actually became very effective, and they just started becoming people movers. And at that point, the run game became very efficient as the game kind of wore on. Now, they mixed it, right? They pulled guys. They did their misdirections. Uh, they, they did, it, as you're going to see here, a wham with their tight end. So they gave different looks. But I thought they were zone blocking well. There's always inconsistencies that comes with that. I thought Jonah Jackson had a fantastic day zone blocking. Now, he had whiffs too. He had one where it was like, oh, negative two yards because Jonah missed his block. It happens in his zone blocking. It's important that everybody picks up their blocks because you make a cutback and then this guy whiffs. Now you're, you're shut down basically there. Happened to Evan Brown one time. But in this case, I do want to showcase kind of just the wham block, just a different look that they give. Right, offensive lineman get up field and then you use your tight end to kind of pin inside. Boom, there's the block, and now you're up to the second level. Some teams do this against aggressive defensive fronts, and they pick up seven yards here. I just want to showcase a little bit of Swift. Jackson had a really good one of these towards the end. Also, on top of this, I know I'm saying a lot here, but I'm trying to get a lot in here. Lions did a lot of this tempo stuff. So coming out of the huddle and not really making any changes at the line, but pretty quickly snapping it, right? Pretty quickly, a lot of tempo, getting the defense off balance, and then hitting you with it. They did the same thing later with Justin Jackson. He picked up 11 yards inside the 20 as well on a similar type of play. So you don't really get the defense a chance to settle in. You hit him with a wham. They're getting up field, and then you're using that against them, and you pick up a chunk play. So shot I would showcase that quick. Let's get into some pass plays, though, some good and some bad. Bounce around here just because, you know, I kind of feel like it. We're going to bounce around a little bit. So this first one is incomplete. This is an incomplete. Uh, they go for the end zone on this play. It turns out 
they can't get it off. They have Tom Kennedy. He actually has Tom Kennedy wide open. This was the fourth down attempt. Now, live time, I said I didn't have an issue with going for it, so I'm not going to come back and say I had an issue with going for it. And this was also not the play that they came out in, right? This was an audible at the line. I don't know what they came out in, but based on what they saw, they audible to this look. Right, and we know this. This was very similar to what you had last week, where Jared Goff felt like he had a zero coverage look. He audible to a certain play to attack that. Okay, here if they show a zero, no safeties over top. Here's how we're gonna attack that. Here's how we're gonna get guys open in the man coverage if they're pressing man. Here's how we're gonna do that. And then they dropped out of it, so now it's different. So now it takes away options potentially. In this play, they didn't drop out of it. I need to showcase this real quick because the Lions do something very similar on their touchdown later in the game. Now, I wouldn't say similar, but they attack what the Packers are doing. So you get the bunch on the left side, and they kind of play like the, the leverage the leverage game, if that makes sense, where your guy that's coming up and pressing is going to take the underneath route, not necessarily who's he's directly across from, but he's going to take the underneath guy. So it's going to be a flat. He's going to take Khalif. Usually over here, they're looking for them to kind of switch, and then if they can get a switch, they're going to throw it there. But in this case, he takes the flat, and then they're kind of playing to leverage. Okay, well, this is the outside corner, so he's going to take Tom Kennedy, and then this guy's going to take St. Brown, just because where they're at, right? Where they're at on the field and where they're at, we got to switch everything off, and that's what every team really does once you get inside like the 10-yard line. And that's what they do here, and he had Tom Kennedy open. I think he probably anticipated the rusher, right, because that's what you're getting defensively. You have no safeties, which they did on their second time. They put a safety middle of the field, and the Lions attacked that he attacked it with his eyes as we'll see but they have a free rusher on this play bringing six against five so I think you anticipate the rusher you know where he's at and he just if he just needed a, a tick more of time it's also his blind side so maybe he can't really see it exactly but if he had just like a sliver more of time and that ball just came out a little bit differently you score a touchdown there so let's get into it lines didn't have a lot of chunk plays passing it I thought they were really good designs when they had their chunk plays I don't think this one was a crazy design but it, it, it just made sense it was a cover three beater defensively so you're going to see Darnell Savage uh, he's going to actually roll down into the box and this is what makes it difficult is you really didn't see this pre-snap we talked about the post snap movement this is what's difficult because they disguise things really well that did not look like that's what they were going to do he drops down underneath and they also bring a blitz out of it they did this a couple times like a cover three blitz usually in a cover three you have four underneath defenders three defenders covering the deep thirds they blitz an underneath defender and they bring it down to three but of course that brings more pass rush it puts stress on other players so it gives you less time as a quarterback to try to find holes in zone which is what you have to do find the holes in zone coverage so you get the short in motion there from st brown is going to run this deep crosser over the middle of the field you got the two deep routes to kind of run off the outside cornerback and also potentially um, this outside underneath zone player they brought one of the underneath guys on a blitz so so there is a hole because there's one less underneath defender than there usually is in this situation. So Goff steps up to take off like almost if you're going to run. He may have been deciding that maybe he wanted to run, but regardless of what he was deciding, or maybe he did this knowing that, hey, I'm going to open this guy up when I take off. Very similarly to, if you think back a few weeks ago, I think it was Seattle on a big chunk play when he took off and opened up the route. Similarly to that, but this one was very much so on schedule. When he took off, he basically put their off-ball linebacker in a conflict. Does he continue to stay in depth and cover up this deep cross behind him or does he dive down and take away the quarterback well in this case as golf takes off looking like he's going to run the linebacker drops down now you open up that space you have two verticals on this play so your outside third corner is going to take the one over top but you do have two different releases here you have one inside who's working like you know a post sort of by Khalif Raymond speedster that everybody has to you know be aware of so your deep outside corner is going to run with that but then also this one getting in the blind spot of Savage on this play is going to force him to continue to get death because if you think about it let's say he jumped up here and he was running a comeback well now he's wide open because this cornerback's going to run over top right so that's what their conflict cause has on this side but with Jared Goff taking off he puts this linebacker in a position to make a decision he decides to run down take away uh run down and attack the quarterback on this play and because of that it actually opens up St. Brown for a 15 yard completion I think it looks better even more so from the other angle just because you can kind of see it develop from his eyes this may not have been a decision of I know what I'm taking off it's going to open this guy up but it was a good job of keeping his eyes downfield at least where even if that wasn't his decision if it was that's pretty awesome even if it wasn't he had his eyes downfield so he may have been thinking run but then once he saw him come up he's like all right i'm taking that and it almost in a sense to me kind of looked like it could have been you know like he feels like okay i can see him with this guy out because he's done that a few times by scrambling and using that run to you know his ability there was what looked like going to be some pressure but i don't think any necessary i don't know if pressure here 
forced him out of the pocket. It could have. I don't know if it did. Uh, regardless, though, you're going to see it. So he takes off. Now the linebacker comes down, and he can just flip it right over top of him. So that was a good job just using his legs to open up that route. So we get another fast motion on this play, and you can see that Ben Johnson was using this. Everybody talks about the Dolphins and their fast motion because they literally have some speedsters out there. So, yeah, you really know it. And they do it all the time. They do it before, like, every single snap. But the utilization of motion, and I talked about it last year of giving off answers with motion. I think a lot of it also as well is just opening up guys with motion right you don't have the best receivers out there so there are examples where you know they man up against us and no one gets open or they'll jam us off the line and no one's open and when that's the case and you can't consistently win your battles and you know that coming in you can't just say hey it's going to be stationary we're just going to run our routes and try to get open because you're not going to get open enough and then at that point you're going to just you're never going to have success offensively so when you're limited ben has to get a little bit creative here and say we're going to have a ton of movement because we have to create openings we have to create matchups we have to create leverage we have to create create things to open up players and that's what he did against Green Bay in different ways right sometimes you would hide guys behind the line of scrimmage and just break them out on the play action it was like where did that guy come from right we saw that in a touchdown against Arizona like little leak route that they ran to St. Brown so you got to get creative when you don't have those guys well here's an example so they're actually manned up defensively on this play so here's the fast motion here you're going to see it from Khalif Raymond and now it's going to take this corner that was pressed up and he's going to run with Khalif so he's going to follow him on this play now since his man this outside deep cornerback because they were stacked up and they don't want to be on top of each other and that can also look like a zone as well but what it does is it puts one-on-one -on -one with a guy that has a lot of space so now a decision has to be made a team that likes to switch a lot of routes using their linebackers and their safeties now there's a decision all they're going to do is have tom kennedy drag the middle so now it's okay look does the cornerback say quay walker take this or does he take the running back who pre-snap he is already matched up with pre-snap he's run he's matched up with the running back and you're like okay this is fine but now that you have this conflict is that, okay, if the cornerback passes it off to the linebacker, then yes, in a perfect world, he could try to cover up Swift, but he would still get a chunk. That's very difficult, though, on the fly because you're reacting to this as it's happening. They don't pause it, right? It's all happening at once. The guy's still in motion while he's snapping it. That's why it's a fast motion. So let's take a look at the conflict this causes. So now he's got Tom Kennedy. Quay Walker is, he's attacking his guy. He's going out there to cover the running back, Justin Jackson, on this play. Well, it's just as simple as that. There's so much space that's created here. Everybody's manned up. But you can see how much space is created here with Tom Kennedy. There's no switch. And uh, it's easy money. I mean, that's just that's just creativity. That's not Tom Kennedy beat someone on a route. That's literally he looked like he was uncovered because you use fast motion to get him uncovered. So well done there. Love the creativity of that play. It's simple, but it's 16 yards as well, and you'll take that. A bit before half. Again, you talk about leverage, the numbers. The Lions on third down like to play the numbers game where if they're especially if they're struggling like in pass pro or they don't have the weapons on a third and like eight, they may play the numbers and hand it off, which I don't have a problem with that. They're like, okay, let's run it. Let's try to block it up, and then we'll pick up a chunk out of this. Um, however... Playing the numbers in the pass game. That's what it looks like on this play to me. So let's take a look. So you have three receivers right. You have three, two is right. And you have one, two, three, four defenders. Technically five on this side of the hash mark. So let's take a look at what they do. They're going to bring and he's going to motion over DeAndre Swift. So the linebackers shift. Now you have four weapons on this side of the field. You basically have a four on five that you're creating here defensively to isolate DeAndre Swift on the linebacker. And a lot of teams, again, they play man coverage in these situations. This doesn't mean it have to be man, but a lot of teams do once you get inside. How do we find a way to make our weapons useful right we can't just have swift run swing routes and be like that's the guy we got to throw it to or just run screens like you got to creatively find a way to open him up so here you go you isolate him with four guys shane zilster attacks the middle he's going to pull a linebacker out of the play which is going to isolate swift one on one so you see what i'm saying here they do have one one deep safety on this play these guys are going to be manned up and now you've isolated deandre swift one-on-one -on -one with the safety over top but then on top of that on the the same side, you have Khalif Raymond running a deep post in the end zone. So now Khalif, who is your one speedster, your one guy that you feel like can get over top, if this safety crashes down to help out here, now you could potentially have inside leverage with Khalif, and that's threatening. So he continues to get depth. There's also no other linebacker for him to switch this off to. Usually when guys cross the middle, linebackers switch. Well, he can't cross because Shane Zilstra has now jumped through the middle of the play. So you cross issues there. So as this linebacker may say, okay, I'm just going to give it to that guy. There's no one there for him to give it to. So now he's isolated in space. 
space, and there you go, good catch behind him uh, up to the one yard line. Even at the one yard line, using fast motion to create matchups. I won't spend a lot of time here, but we see teams do this to us all the time, so why can't we do it? Well, let's take a look at it. Fast motion with their tight end. It just switches responsibilities. It switches matchups, and in this case, it's all about communication at the one, right? Because you can just say, well, I got this guy, I got the, you got this guy. But if they rub then, it's going to be very difficult to cover that up. You see the communication between Amos and Savage as Amos was actually matched up, it looks like, on Brock Wright pre-snap. He's communicating uh, with Darnell Savage on this play, but there's a miscommunication here, and you can see that it's covered up poorly. Zilster shows block, and then he just leaks out, and no one actually mans up on Shane Zilster, so he's absolutely uncovered, and there you go. You get a touchdown. Take a look at this interception that Jared Goff threw, and it was the same coverage that I've kind of anticipated that it was going to be. Based on the replay that we got to see live, I was like, yeah, that's probably cover three, just because that's usually, usually on paper, this is how you can attack a cover three, so I kind of just assumed that's what this was. Again, they have smart DB, so they could be playing off, man. They can also play zone, but they can see ball and man, and that's what makes them very tough in the back end from off coverage. So, again, with not a lot of threats over top either, your only threat over top was Khalif. That's why coming into the game, I said, hey, we could see St. Brown for those 15-yard chunks. Didn't get as many as I anticipated, but this would have been one of those because Khalif is the guy that you use to run off over top. Well, let's take a look at this. So again, they're, they're using the motion here with Dan Skipper, uh, but let's take a look at how this progresses. What they're going to do is they're going to have Khalif Ram run a deep corner route, and then they're going to just bring DeAndre, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown across the field on a deep crossing route. Pretty simple. And then they're going to run a flat here with Jamal Williams. Lions do this all the time. It's simple. You can go heavy personnel. You don't need a ton of receivers. You can just cause problems if they're in cover three, which is what they're in now, and then they blitz. They'll play three underneath defenders and bring an extra rusher on this play. So what you'll see what takes place on this one is usually Alexander is going to be drawn by Kylie Frame. Now he's already in off coverage, so it's a little bit more difficult to do that. But on top of that, he's running a corner route. In a sense, this could be almost uncoverable because you're putting Jair Alexander in a spot where, okay, if he dives down on the deep crosser to pass it off with Razul Douglas, well, the deep corner route, the safety's on this side. That's wide open for Kylie Frame. But, of course, if he stays on top, then St. Brown is literally uncovered. So we'll take a look from the other angle because it's easier to see what happens here. And it's also just a fantastic play by Jair Alexander. Give him credit. And Razul Douglas. I'll show it one more time on this side, and then we'll take a look at the other side. Because there's communication here between the two. Very, look, I'm telling you, they're a sound back end. So they communicate here, and they both received a message and you can see Alexander gets that communication and he stops and he dives down right he's like oh okay I got it he's crossing this way I got you I'm gonna dive down and golf throws it anticipates it's gonna be there and he throws the interception so let's take a look though from this other angle first thing I think is a big one is pressure um, because I think pressure could have sped up the progressions a little bit clearly this was the progression he knew where he was going to go with this one right you can see where he starts he starts with Khalif and then he goes to the to the running back which I think can do a couple things um, but mainly he can pull this linebacker down out of the zone and give a lot of space to Khalif Raymond to kind of work it can give him a lot of uh, space it's a little bit sped up you would think if this was slowing down a little bit and by the time that Jared Goff was coming back to the running back and he was breaking into the corner route now it would threaten Jay Alexander more but it's so quickly that Khalif hasn't even broke to a corner route yet he's showing that he's just running vertically so Jay Alexander has no concern necessarily of leaving this route because it looks like the safety is going to be able to pick it up. There should be concern because if Kali breaks, now he has to make a decision. But it's sped up a little bit. Now, wonder why? Well, I'm thinking potentially here pressure could have definitely played into this. You could see Kenny Clark winning on this one, and I think Goff saw that when he looked over there. So, you may hurry it up. You may say, okay, you know what? I'm not going to be as patient. I'm not going to hold this because longer. if I hold this a little bit longer, right, Alexander may continue to get depth, and if not, then I can get him in at least in a conflict here. But he comes back and he's throwing this. It could have just been he sped up the progression a little bit too soon against a smart corner that he just anticipated would beat this coverage, which it should. On paper, this would beat that coverage. But in this case, they communicate well. You can see Douglas. They make a really good play on the football. Anyways, that's basically what happens. He breaks down. He leaves him. Golf throws it, anticipating that he's going to drag and Jaira is going to uh, carry it. And he doesn't. It would have been a, in a perfect spot, but it's actually intercepted. So good play by him. And then again, it's a shout out to our defense because they got us off the field. Things like that happen. Good DBs make plays. It's unfortunate, but it does. Especially when you're limited, you can get a little bit like, okay, we're kind of limited in how we're going to get over top. When you struggle to threaten and separate, that off-man coverage gets dangerous. There was a near interception that we didn't show on here um, on an out route where they ran two vertical, but the off-man, he broke off his coverage and jumped under it underneath. Show this real quick. I won't spend a ton of time here, but again, we talk about them, their ability to disguise coverage. I'll just show this quick. This is the same 
similar route concept, maybe not the exact same, but it's very similar to what happened against Dallas when it was picked off. Lines are going to go empty. They motion out Jamal, which kind of gives you a little bit of a tell of it being man coverage, and they're playing off man coverage on this play across the board. They're just all playing off, eyes on quarterback and the man. It's very difficult, but when you're in third and long, which, by the way, don't want to go on a rant here. We got to stay out of those spots. It's just like last year, right? Why don't we convert on third down and long? Well, it's because you don't have the weapons to do so. You're going to be less efficient there. So by nature, you having false starts, you having negative runs, negative early down plays, that's going to get you in a really a spot, and your chances of picking up are much less likely. It just is what it is. It, you just don't have the weapons right now to consistently pick that up. So you have to understand that, and that's why early downs become so critical for you. But yeah, they're just playing off-man coverage on this play, and this is also a timing kind of read as well. You can see St. Brown has the inside leverage here, and they're going to do a very similar route to what we saw against Dallas. He crosses like he's crossed the middle. If he had a little more speed, this could be a little more threatening, but he breaks like he's going to deep cross the middle, and then he sits it down right over the middle. Boom, right there, and golf throws it as he sits down. You can see he is pulled down kind of out of the way a little bit, and it almost leads to a pick. Now, I think you could definitely argue that this ball could come out earlier and it could help his receiver because then he wouldn't have to kind of post himself up. However, like the Tom Kennedy one, I still can't tell if they're asking the receivers to break and then kind of fade back out or hold their ground. He's, he was pulled down on it, but I just thought it showed because it's very similar and you see a lot of that kind of stuff. This is maybe my favorite play from the entire thing. Like, seriously, this play like got me thinking. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is disgusting. Like, seriously, I'm watching this. I'm like, this is nasty. This is, about, this is about as nasty as a play call if I've seen this season. It's nothing crazy, but it's just nasty, okay? It's almost like the Lions run like two deep end dig routes on this play. Play, but at the same time, because of how they run it and because of how the play develops and where golf's eyes are naturally going to be, it opens up a huge hole in the defense. So as we've been seeing these early downs, they've been playing cover three. They're rolling a safety down the box, understanding tendencies is how they're playing us. On this play, they're not showing it though. Can't you talk about their disguising, right? It looks like, oh, potentially man, maybe cover one blitz. That's kind of what it looks like. They're dropping out though. They drop out, boom. They drop out here and they drop out here. So I don't know if golf got to tell of that pre-snap or not, or if he felt like that was coming. That's motion, which I might as well point out. It kind of does give you a tell number one that this definitely could be zone coverage just because of how he's lined up so that fast motion could give you that tell that oh they're dropping in his zone but they drop into their cover three this safety amos is going to um, roll down into in coverage deep middle here but let's take a look at the play design from this. This thing is sweet on this play. So they stack up, and we've seen this do this a lot, where they kind of have one guy run behind the other. In this case, they're going to have basically Kali Freeman almost run behind Amon Ross St. Brown. Now he's going to switch with him, and they're both going to run dig routes at different levels. Kali's going to break first, and then St. Brown's going to break on the outside of this. But that's going to create a hole. Shane Zilstra is going to come and sit down right here. He's going to sit down right next to Quay Walker on this play, who, of course, is in zone coverage. So not only does a route concept give them problems because it creates a hole but it also is where jared golf's eyes are going to be on this one which creates a problem so you get the chip he's going to sit down and curl golf is throwing this this looks super similar to last year just different but very similar in its own little way you can see where the ball is going and Kali Freeman could also create space here where the safety can't kind of creep up on it you can see the hole that it creates naturally it's way cooler from the other angle but this play is sweet like that play design to find that hole in that zone coverage is awesome. Plus, they're dropping out so they could have a little bit less depth. Let's say this linebacker drops really deep and he picks up Kelly Freeman. Well, now St. Brown's still open, right? Because St. Brown is going to be running underneath that. So you're also getting levels, which doesn't really become, I think, super necessary here, but it could be necessary to have those levels on this play. But take a look from this angle. So they drop out. Look where Garrett, Jared Goff's eyes go. Of course, they start middle. Then he comes here to uh, Shane Zilstra and looks at that. Now you pull 51 down and Shane Zilstra is going to sit in zone. He's got no reason to move because the guy is standing there. If he moves, then Goff's just going to throw it at him. So he's got nowhere to no reason to move so now you have one quay walker sitting here in zone coverage and you got two dig routes that are going to come right behind him so take a look at this it pulls the linebacker out of the play he's throwing it this linebacker is probably thinking oh my gosh he's throwing it right at me right Khalif raymond and then following in which again if this linebacker sees that he may drop be like oh i gotta go get this guy let me cut this off and then here comes st brown wide open doesn't really become necessary in this play but it's sweet man He's looking at Shane Zilstra, throws it next, right next to his ear to Monroe St. Brown, and boom, right there in the hole. I mean, that is, that's like one of the most money play designs. I mean, it's, we've done like versions of this out of on single back and things like that last year, but this is so sweet, man. Like this stuff is sweet. And then we come back with another wham. There you go. Justin Jackson for 11. There's that tempo we talked about. The first one, I think my plan was actually to show you guys the second one, but for some reason I didn't. I don't know why. 
that was the plan. Here you go. Come back out there with tempo uh, offensively on this play, and let's see how they do this. So the first thing is you have, you know, you're kind of your two men over here, which in man coverage, which again, they're playing here from the three. This is, okay, if they switch, you know, you, you, you can try to cause confusion here, basically. If you cause confusion and this breaks open, you just quickly hit the flat two Khalif. He's got the speed to get out there and you throw it. It doesn't open up. Okay, cool. What's great is we don't have plays that are just like, okay, one read and throw. Like, I, I don't know where that term comes from for this. These are plays designed with multiple reads. You have to look through multiple because if it's not there, what are you going to do? Just, just fall down? That's not what happens. Pass protection plays into that. But in this situation, this is the first read. You look there. They switch it. They cover it up well. Awesome. Now, similarly to what we saw last time, Packers are doing the same thing, kind of playing the leverage a little bit. So the underneath coverage is the guy that presses up. That is going to be the inline tight end Brock Wright who's going to run on the flat. So he's going to take that boom. Now, this is ran a little bit different. James Mitchell is going to attack almost like he's fading out here to the outside cornerback. So now the outside cornerback is going to match up with him. St. Brown, I mean, Swift kind of stutters off the line and then sits down right over the middle. So you're seeing where this is causing issues. They're switching everything. So as he breaks this way, Alexander's like, I got him. I can kind of sag back. I got him. He's coming to my direction. Swift breaks underneath. Linebacker, you're going to be pulled out of the play because now you can't sit there and be in my way. But then there's this middle safety you got to worry about. Now watch Jared Goff's eyes as I show you this thing. Boom. He comes back this way, looking left. Now Alexander sees that. He bites down, but then it's this. Alexander's on the outside. Safety is in the middle. Jared Goff's eyes are here. Safety dives down, and as he stares this, you see him staring it. Safety shoots, and then Goff comes right back, right next to him. I mean, on live, this looked like, oh, it's wide open. That's an easy throw. But when you watch it back, you're like, that was not wide open. That was all eyes opening up that play. It's a cool play design, but that was all the eyes of this one. His eyes bring this safety out of the play. You have outside leverage with Alexander, which is already going to be difficult. And they're switching everything. So he could try to switch this off to the safety. But at the same time, the safety is now biting this way because he's the one guy that's watching Jared Goff's eyes. Right? So, boom, eyes come back right to him. Boom, money. And then over the linebacker that was taken by Swift. That is a sweet play design, but also good job using your eyes to convert that. So we're in our favor to pick it up. Understandable. Um, but I didn't have an issue with it. A couple things here. Not a ton that I need to show. They just go man coverage across the board. They bring six guys. We have six blockers. So it's six on six. So you got to be able to hold up. So they're putting pressure on us getting open immediately. And as we know, we don't really have the guys to do that. So we're trying to create to get guys open. So Khalif Raymond, for example, who's on a safety right now because of the bliss that they're bringing, he's going to get open on a deep dig. There's no chance to get it out there. He doesn't have time to look there. So it's two things, and Kennedy runs deep. He's not getting open. So it's really two guys. It's St. Brown who's going to drag the middle, and then it is Shane Zilstra who's going to kind of break outside of that and then come over top of it. So with the one free defender, as you're going to see here, Quick note, unfortunately, Jamal stays in the block, and that actually leads to this free defender because he was matched up with Jamal, but we had to leave him in to pass protect. However, that defender is smart by not diving down. He just sits over the middle and actually brackets in coverage. Switched this off really well defensively, so they end up basically bracketing in uh, St. Brown on this play, as you're going to see right here. You can see it switched off really well. Good communication, boom. They and I think the lines were actually prepared for the switch. Again, it's just that that free defender sits and brackets it in, so now Goff has to go to his second look because there is no way to get this off over top they run the route so the only opportunity that this play would have really had is trying to hit Shane Zilstra in that second level you can't throw it now you got to wait until this guy clears otherwise you're throwing an interception so you have to wait for that well St. Brown is doubled so that's not gonna be open there's nothing here yet this guy will break open but it's just too long you need this guy and of course Shane Zilstra gets kind of like bumped off the line but he doesn't create much separation early either and uh because that's doubled up there's nowhere to go with the football other than there or just take the sack so he's gonna throw it he throws it this would have been the guy even though i don't know even if he would have had time if he would have converted this because he's not really open that shane zilstra and you could a lot try to like lob it up to him but other than that it, i'm not really mad about it. they covered it up well i like the decision to go for it they switched credit for them they didn't have a breakdown in coverage they just they matched up cleanly and they bracketed it up and then they got pressure on top of that definitely some fun things from this one lions did bring out a lot of the fast motion i'm excited for this week because the bears don't have a great run defense and i love the 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 promise that i saw with the tempo mixed with the zone blocking consistency right that's going to be huge i look forward to seeing more swift because i think his explosiveness could be very helpful um especially with the tempo runs but i do think the lions can find that's the same success again which is going to open up everything our key coming into this game was keeping it simple and uh that started with running football when the lions ran the football well they scored it was just that simple so with that let me know your thoughts in the comments below thank you Brad, for watching we'll be back tomorrow with like a preview live stream like we did last week